Good afternoon. I am Dr. Tanya Chakraborty. I will be presenting a case report of post sinusitis huge orbital abscess in a one month old infant. Infantile orbital abscess is a rare, severe, and intractable ocular infection which tends to progress rapidly. It can occur either from contagious spread of the infection from paranasal sinus, eyelid, teeth, or it can arise from exogenous sources like trauma or surgery. It can also develop from endogenous source during systemic illness and spread to the orbital tissue through hematogenous roots, especially during septicemia. In childhood, it is at least twice as common among males as females. It is important to recognize as retrograde spread of this infection can lead to alarming consequences like subperiosteal abscess, intracranial abscess, cavernous sinus thrombosis, meningitis, and vision loss. Our case is a one-month-old uh, female infant presented to our emergency with persistent fever along with rapidly increasing swelling and redness in the left eyelids since four days following an upper respiratory tract infection. It was initially in the medial aspect of the left eye and then progressively increased. The infant was born by normal vaginal delivery. She was born in full term. Her birth weight was 3 kg. She was on breastfeeding since birth. There was no maternal history of STD and the pregnancy was uneventful. There was no history of any trauma, surgery or any significant past medical history. On general examination, the child was febrile and looked ill and lethargic. On ocular examination, the left eye revealed massive swelling, marked erythema, increased temperature of the upper and the lower eyelids and the in, on the adjacent forehead. The swelling was tendered mainly on the medial sides of the left upper eyelid. The lids could not be separated properly due to huge swelling, so the vision, intraocular pressure, extraocular muscle movement, pupillary reaction, anterior segment, and DF examination could not be assessed. The right eye examination was within normal limit. On investigation, WBC count was increased with neutrophilic predominance. ESR was raised. MRI report of the orbit was suggestive of large multiloculated abscess in extracranial left orbit with elevation of the floor of anterior cranial fossa. The extracular muscles are compressed by the lesion. The lesion is extending into the adjacent posterior ethmoidal air cells. No intracranial extension is seen. Extension of the lesion is seen in the left temporal region of the skull. A provisional diagnosis of the orbital abscess was made. Empirical therapy with IV antibiotics were started. In spite of the treatment, the lid swelling was increasing. Even the fever continued to rise in day three. As there was no response to systemic antibiotics, surgical drainage of the abscess was performed under general anesthesia. Around 12 milliliters of the thick uh, yellowy sparse was drained and sent for culture and sensitivity. Culture of the pus demonstrated methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus, which was sensitive to linezolite and zentamycin. Postoperatively, the patient received IV linezolite. Patient responded very well with steady decrease in the swelling and fever over the next three days. WBC count and ESR returned within normal limit within five days. The patient was discharged after seven days. Uh, very few cases of community acquired methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus peri uh, periocular infections in infantile patients have been reported. The most recent being a report of two cases of infantile community acquired MRSA orbital cellulitis by Coyabshi et al. and a neonatal case by Sironi et al. Another case of the perinatal community acquired methicillin resistance staphylococcus aureus dacrocystitis and periorbital cellulitis was reported in a 12 day old previously healthy neonate. The patient was followed up in OPD uh, clinic Afrebrile and there was no sign of inflammation or swelling. IDDDMA subsided totally after three weeks of treatment with free and full movement of eyeball in all directions of gauge. Uh, normal pupillary reaction and normal fundus examination. So prompt diagnosis and early intervention are required for a favorable outcome of this condition and also appropriate antimicrobial agent against staphylococcus aureus is necessary in treating infantile orbital abscess along with surgical drainage when it, whenever it is required. Thank you. So Dr. Tanya, why do you think what were the predisposing factors for this abscess to occur? Was uh, the baby... Sin uh, sinusitis. Sinusitis, okay. so what, what measures can you take in, a, in any uh, patient to prevent this kind of uh, abscess formation? And did you do a syringing uh, during your GA? Like, was it the dacrocystitis predisposed? No, ma'am. Syringing was not done. Uh, we just take the history of uh, upper respiratory tract infection, and from that, we concluded that it may be from sinusitis. Okay. And uh, could be there any other factors other than sinusitis? Like normally, the patient would not develop sinusitis, and le th that means the child was, uh, you know, immunocompromised in some way. Mm. Did you try to look for those factors? No, ma'am. Mm. So basically, anyway, any abscess, the treatment is IND. What is more important is why it actually occurred in this child, and what could have been the measures taken to prevent such kind of a, uh, you know. This abscess formation, like 
was it that the mother also had some kind of an infection or was it the child in the nursery because a lot of time there are nosocomial infections in during the hospital stay itself like you know the dais who are dealing with it they may be having those mrsa in their nasal cavities and that could lead to infection anything you want to add dr seema agree with that i think uh, what you have managed is fine it's pretty well kind of you know well managed and the outcome has been very good uh, but it's important in this situation to rule out any underlying cause uh, in a child like this i mean such a severe sinusitis mm -hmm. is pretty unusual um, sinuses are not very well developed in children especially in an infant so and there are reports of children developing severe orbital infection specifically maybe fungal infection this was not a fungal mm -hmm. where the underlying cause has been leukemias mm -hmm. any cause of mm -hmm. immune deficiency so probably that needs a little mm -hmm. thorough investigation so that you know he doesn't land up with any further issues later on in fact you should have investigated the mother also for all kinds of you know viral markers like the mother may be actually be, be hiv positive who knows mm -hmm. so those kind of things are more important uh, than just the ind mm -hmm. right